G'day and welcome along to the um, final edition of Rob's Roundup for the year, uh, the Christmas edition and coming to you live from the finance area. And no one can accu accuse um, the accounts team of being lacking creativity. This is a pretty cool um, cool setup here, so coming to you live from Santa's sleigh. We've um, got a very full agenda for our final meeting of the year on, on Wednesday, um, kicking off with the Milford Opportunities Project update. So this is, um, Milford Opportunities Project is something that um, being run through um, DOC, um, we've got Minister of Conservation, Minister of Tourism and Minister of Transport alongside Naitahu and Council's obviously got an involvement there as well and we're looking at the constraints of sort of Milford Sound and, and what's happening there and what we can do for a more sustainable sort of tourism system. So we're going to hear from the Chair of the Milford Opportunities Project, so that'll be, that'll be really good to have an update from there. Secondly, we've got the Swim Safe update. So, Active Southland um, Swim Safe are presenting to the meeting to update Council on how the funding granted through the long term plan process has been utilised. So, what we do through our long term plan, which we're currently doing at the moment, is we have some grants that go to certain organisations to, to spend on their activities, and Swim Safe is one of them, and Enviro Schools is another one. So, they're also coming along to give us an update. Um, so, we've got Enviro Schools and the Waituna partnership. So, they'll be um, explaining to us how they go and I've actually had some feedback from a couple of the schools as to how good that, that program's been so it'll be good to hear from them as well. Um, we're also undertaking at the moment a representation review and you'll remember from a previous Rob's Roundup where we talked about that and getting the um, committee set up to sort of govern that. So since that process we've had a, our first meeting and the staff have been going around um, the community boards and also around the community getting some views so We've got some guiding sort of principles that um, the working group sort of put forward um, and that's coming through to council just as a bit of information and to get um, acceptance of those. We've also got some changes to the Stewart Island Rakiora visitor levy policy. Um, so that would, has just gone up to $10 in October of this year. So that's basically any visitors over to the island pay a levy and that helps to fund some of the infrastructure for the visitor side of things. So the minor amendments to that just around the, I guess, the timing and, and how it's advertised just to make it more streamlined, which is always a good thing for those committees. Um, also got the draft elected members remuneration and reimbursement policy coming up. So this is something that we have to have. Our remuneration is decided by, um, by Wellington, but we do have a little bit of control inside what we do and our policy and what we spend. And the main one, we had a workshop that was live streamed um, a few weeks ago now, and the main one there was removing the ability for elected members to re be reimbursed for alcohol, so kind of a common sense one there. Also got the Mayor's Report, which is just a list of the things that I've been up to over the last month, and importantly hearing from four of our community boards. So you would have noticed in previous meetings we've been hearing from our boards throughout the year, and we've got Odaka Parima, Tuatapri Te Waiwai, well, I hope I toy toy and Wallace Takatumu, so the last four boards there, getting an update on what they've been up to, and that'll be really great to hear from those chairs. Um, we've got a proposed update to the RMA delegations. So the current delegations manual enables hearing commissions to make commissioners to make decisions on a number of provisions in the RMA relating to resource consenting. So when council approved the previous delegation updates in September 23 one of the provisions was admitted. So council needs to consider this report to add a provision now because there's a need to increase the capacity of planners processing and issuing decisions on resource consent. So basically just making sure that we can be as efficient as possible and um, we yeah, just need to update our delegations manual to do that. So that should be pretty straightforward. The trading in public places bylaw, this has been a continuation from previous council meetings. So we're up to deliberations and adoption on this. So had a um, few submissions at our last meeting, we had an oral submitter there, so appreciated them coming along, so getting to the final stages of that um, by law there. Also the draft significance and engagement policy, so this is, forms part of the long-term plan and each long-term plan period we review this policy and this one it basically enables communities to identify the degree of significance attached to particular matters. So and that determines the level of engagement and consultation that we do. It's legislatively kind of required. So we've got some significant assets at the moment, um, the Around the Mountain Cycle Trail, the Tiana Manapuri Airport. Um, so any changes made on those requires a special um, consultation and engagement process. So we're just sort of having a look at that policy. Also the Code of Practice District Plan change. This is to get approval from Council to 
withdraw their proposed plan to implement the subdivision land use and development code of practice 23 and to initiate a new plan change process. Um, the report basically advises continuing to use the subdivision land use and development bylaw until a new plan change process is implemented. So this is something that we looked at a, a while ago, combining with ICC, but we've um, noticed some sort of fish hooks in there, so we've just had to take a step back and, and, and re-look at that and um, get that sort of sorted out later on. The next one is the special purpose road funding revocation. So council's got two roads at the moment that um, have this designation, which means that they're funded 100% through um, Waka Kotahi. They, every three years, review this, and um, yeah, they're basically proposing to revoke that, which is going to have quite an impact on, on, our, on our rates and with us, us having to maintain those roads. If you remember back to the flooding back in 2020, the Holyford Road got severely impacted, and having that 100% funded from Waka Katahi certainly saves us some money, so we're going to have some pretty big conversations if we have to be funding those sorts of roads that... Um, I mean, the Holyford one in particular leads to a Department of Conservation land, so we need to have some big conversations there with, with Waka Katahi around that. Um, we've also got a report coming back. Um, we had a workshop a few weeks ago from Steve Canny at Great South around the sea level rise and extreme sea level exposure spatial forecasting. It's a bit of a mouthful there, but we've got that report coming back through. So it's the Southland Coast and Stewart Island sea level rise and extreme sea level exposure spatial forecasting technical report. Um, and that's been peer reviewed, so we'll have a, a presentation on that just for our information. We've also got um, unbudgeted expenditure for South Sea Spray Trust to do some work in Winton. So this has been done previously in Riverton in, in our district and also in Bacargill and Bluff. So the community board there have endorsed um, $20,000 from the Ward Reserve to go towards this project. It's about $190,000 in total. And they're looking at going to Winton in February to do, I think, 15 or 16 buildings there, so that's quite an exciting project, and yeah, so we'll just be endorsing or not that um, that $20,000. Next on the list is the draft speed management plan submissions. So we had 58 of those, so thank you to everyone that, that came forward and put their submissions through. I think there was about 200 pages worth in the agenda, so some good reading there. Um, they were highly supportive of changes proposed to speed limits around the schools, so a lot of them sort of ran going to 30 k's around the, the schools generally supportive of most of the high-risk road proposals in the boundary roads, and this more mixed um, concerning speed changes of the limits around the mandatory review of the 70 kilometer hour road. So good mixed feedback in there, but some um, good themes coming in there as well. So yeah, that was probably one of the, the longest ones um, for the year, but good way to end on a high. And um, yeah, come along and watch on Wednesday if you want. We'll be live streamed as always. and. Hope you all have a wonderful Christmas and we'll see you in January. So the next Rob's Roundup might be a little bit different seeing as I've started a different one now. We'll, um, we'll mix it up again in, in January. So have a great Christmas and um, see you next year. Thanks very much.